Here we go. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Blackout Tips Podcast. I am your host, Rod, joined as always by my co-host, Karen. And we are live today on a Tuesday, ready to do some podcasting. A lot of stuff happened today. We'll get into it. Okay. The official weapon of the show is... Phone chair. Phone chair. And the unofficial sport... Bullet ball. And bullet ball extreme. <laughs> uh, do you have any banter? I have one, and I just thought about it. You was playing some Lupe, and it made me think about something. All right. Well, you know what? Let me get to the banter music. So, boom. Psycho. Psycho. Music. music. All right, Karen, hit me with that banter. Uh, yeah, uh, pregame, for those of you that uh, don't listen to the uh, the live show in the mm -hmm. chat room and stuff, you don't hear Roger kind of pregames. He plays, you know, music ahead, ahead of the actual show recording. And he was playing some Lupe. And I got a little sad because uh, Lupe, uh, I loved his music. Mm -hmm. And then he, like, went on the deep end, like, never returned. And so it kind of made me think of kind of Kanye today. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where a lot of people remember a, at his best. And he's been uh, kind of on the deep end for a few years now. And it's one of those things where I think because of social media and things like that wasn't what it is today and uh, stuff like that, I think uh, Lupe kind of got a pass on things that now, the, the the environment now would not have given him a pass on. What kind of things? You remember he started talking online all crazy. He was falling out with everybody. I don't remember all the things he did. And then he started putting out music that was not good. Um, and it was one of those things where it just made me think about, you know, just uh, between him and Kanye. Because, you know, Kanye uh, is medical conditions and things like that. And people just don't want to hear any excuses. You know, they're like, I don't care. I, don't, I You know, it, it's, it's just ridiculous. It just made me sad. And it's one of those things when people go, I miss the old Kanye. Every time I hear Lupe stuff, I always go, I miss the old Lupe. That's interesting. I I, I hear you. I'm, I'm Googling to, to try to refresh my memory because... I remember him like doing things that I thought like oh, he's kind of a dick for doing this or whatever. But I that didn't bother me. I've never looked at rappers as needing to be good people. I just I never agreed. have. It's never been bothered me. Uh, I still listen to Kanye West old shit. I don't I don't feel like I'm betraying anything. I I, I, nope. I, I, I don't know why people act like Drake is some third rail with our generation of people when we have much, much, much worse people that we right. listen to. Yes. Um, you know, and I just happened to not get into some folks just because either I was too old or they were just rapping about some other shit or they were, uh, or they died before yeah. like XX Tentacion. I never got into his music. So it just, I understand it hurt the kids, but it didn't hurt me, you know? Right. Anyway, my point is Lupe, um, for me, when his music stopped being as good. Yes. The production value, like I love food and liquor. Mm -hmm. I love the cool. Yes. Um, and lasers I thought was just okay at best. Right. And um, I think he went, I don't think it was a net, I don't think he would have been hurt if the internet would have been bigger because I want to say he was really wilding around like 2016-ish, which is peak internet time um and the stuff he main thing i remember him saying or actually no no you're right it was before that so it had to be like 2011 ish like right around and he the said beginning. i remember the thing where i thought uh oh this dude might be kind of wild is when he said he wasn't gonna vote for obama and then he just made like a, a stance on i'm not voting i won't be voting essentially in the presidential election and and he just and it's and you know we've talked about voting and how we feel about it here and I mm -hmm. that I felt the same way back then, 
And um, I just was like, oh, okay, cool. But I think the stuff he said would have actually gained him some fans now uh, because he was saying something like the Gaza Strip got bombed and Obama didn't say shit. That's why I ain't voting for him next time. Neither. I'm a problem. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm something like I'm a problem to the something. The problem is I'm peaceful. I remember and that. Yeah. that right now is a, that line is aged great. Like yeah, that line now is like people be like, yes, absolutely. We need this energy. Why aren't any other rappers and singers and people saying stuff like this? So I don't think he would be. I think he'd be in uh, a lot of people would hold him in high esteem. Now, he did have another issue where he had a freestyle where he called. He said uh, he was artists are getting robbed for their publishing by dirty Jewish execs who think that is arms from the covenant. Now that is some just old fashioned anti-Semitism. Yes. He denied is. the accusations of anti-Semitism in a series of tweets, but you know, he then went on to tweet about dirty ass fake Muslims selling alcohol in the hood before falsely claiming his song had been removed from SoundCloud because of hate speech. Um, finally, after arguing with those who attacked him, he said, I get the hint. God, yo, Lupe fans have been fun. I hope you had fun. I'm officially not releasing any more music. I was canceled. Um, he also said he was getting beat up for telling the truth. Uh, my issues with him are it's kind of like no name. He's I just always find him to be messy. And yeah, once the that. music stops being good, I'm out. It doesn't. I, I'm not around. Me I'm not. Saying, I'm not asking to agree with care. you as a person. I listened to Killer Mike's album lately. And it's fucking dope. It's Ain't a dope it flames? album. You know, I love Kendrick. I don't agree with these niggas. I've never had to. And anybody that preaches that shit is only saying that about artists they don't really fuck with. Right. Because if you go through their catalog, especially if they listen to hip hop, you're going to find some shit where you like, you don't fuck with this person on this level and that level. So, uh, but yeah, I hear you though. I'm, I, it does kind of, I don't get sad as much as it's just like, I can always go back and listen to the old shit. I, yes, I, I can. Mean, I'm not asking him to make his old shit again. He's Mm-mm. he's continuously made mu- music this whole time. You just haven't clicked on it and listened to it to see if it's good. I agree. You, you might agreed. like it. You don't <laughs> yes, know. Nope. You just didn't click on it. So right. it's nothing to me to be sad about. I'd be sad if I was listening to this shit and was like, oh, this shit is whack. <laughs> but if, if, you know, right now, he gave us two what I consider to be five mic albums. And uh, I agree. Good. Yeah, and I listen. Yeah, and periodically I roll them. I have several artists where I haven't listened to their newer stuff, but I fell in love with their older stuff, and I just keep that in rotation. Um, I do have one thing. I forgot about this, but we talked about it in the car, and I didn't know if I was saving for feedback or actually not talk about it at all, but fuck it. This is the Black Altist. We talk about it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you listen to feedback shows, you know Mandy H., who writes in, um, like every couple of weeks or so, and she normally has a take that a lot of times I think she'd be writing nonsense and projecting a lot of shit and saying weird shit. And sometimes she'll say something. I'm like, Oh, I actually agree with that. Cool. Right. And we try to make this a space for people to have feedback and stuff, but I don't even know Mandy H at all. Could be an alias, could not even be a real person. Like I'm always a little skeptical of the people that constantly disagree, but continue to write into the show. We've had people in the past that would come up with aliases and mm-hmm. multiple, you know, multiple accounts, right? Yes. Right stuff every week to try to get like a rise out of us. And I just, mm-hmm. once I realized that's what was happening is like, okay, your time of writing into the show is, is over, you know? Right. Um, but I don't know that Mandy's fake or real. I don't know anything about Mandy other than this is the email account that writes in to disagree. Mm-hmm. So Mandy wrote, Candace on The Breakfast Club. Dear Rod and Karen, I watched The Breakfast Club interview with Candace Owens and the cast doing a black enough quiz on her bothered me. She was only quiz because she is black educate, a black educated woman who happens to align with the Republican Party and married to a white man. I thought we were not a monolith, though. They would have never did that to Barack Obama if he was on that show. Well, he would have known God is good all the time, though. So let's just keep that real. Uh, I'm sick and tired of black people doing shit like this, because if you happen to be a black woman that is either educated, Republican, part of the high class in an interracial relationship, you got to prove your blackness due to being outside of the boxes. The Breakfast Club did somewhat the same rhetoric with Kamala. 
it fucks with me because I get first of all, and I don't know why this is becoming a habit. Y'all keep writing up here about shows that aren't ours. Shows that aren't ours. We're not Van Lathan's podcast. We're not the Breakfast Club's podcast. We didn't say this shit. We shouldn't have to defend anything they did. Nope, and I'm not. I refuse. And I don't watch their shit. I don't watch or listen to the Breakfast Club stuff. I didn't see this Candace Owens thing because I knew what it was going to be. They were going to soft pedal some, some questions out there for her and ultimately legitimize her. Whether they were going to be a little tough ribbing or not, it was ultimately that interview served to make you feel the way you're feeling, which is that Candace Owens is a victim and just needs some love and she ain't too bad. I don't know what the problem is anyway. That's what platforms like that do for people. That's why they have people on there that are fucked up in all kinds of ways. And when you leave, you're like, maybe they're not that fucked up because they piled around with three people that I listen to all the time. So why you're watching that show for Candace Owens, I don't know. But um, clearly it worked. I said yesterday as my banter, black people, don't fall for this Candace Owens rebrand. And clearly some of y'all gonna fall for it even if you listen to this show. All I'm saying is, if you are feeling this way about Candace Owens, you can never, ever write into the blackout tips at Gmail and have a problem with anything we've ever said. Period. Because I'm gonna finish reading this. But if this is the bar, we've jumped over this bar by a billion. So I, clearly, we can never have an issue. Anyway, uh, it fucks with me because I get this all the time from my own people and it sucks. Black and proud, but not proud of everything that goes on in the black community. I'm just tired of this BS. Candace Owens is not anti-black. Now, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to believe Candace Owens is not. Because you say so? Yeah, she anti-black. Just like, and this is something me and Roger talked about in the car. Just because somebody don't call you a nigga don't mean they ain't racist. Right. Uh, stop doing that. Stop telling lies, bro. Stop telling lies, bro. You heard what I just told you, right? The devil is a lie. That's what I heard him say. The lies. The lies. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and also the thing is, a lot of times when I when I see this, is very frustrating. Like here, this is very frustrating at times. Because the same standard that you have for Candace Owens, you do not have the same standards for the white people that do this bullshit. They do shit. They dog whistle. They say all types of shit. And they don't call us niggers. They don't say go out and hang them all. But you can read between the lines and you are intelligent enough to understand the words that they mean. They say things without saying things. I think you're giving Mandy a lot of credit. We don't know that Mandy is intelligent enough to not think to know that those white people like she could be listening to the, to all them people over there with the Daily Wire and shit. Just because they listen to us doesn't mean... And I've said this for a long time. People listen to us and then go listen to Breakfast Club. That's true. So the, the, the we're just one voice in their ear, but right. we don't know what that the, the person's intelligence level is, what their solidarity with blackness is, any of that shit. Yeah, it, you could be a conservative Republican and listen to blackout tips and then go listen to Candace Owens and go, I think she made some good points when she said George Floyd died from an overdose and not the fucking nine minutes that that cop's knee was on his neck. They could, she could legitimately believe that bullshit. That, that, that's true. And also, this is one of the things, too, and we've kind of talked about this before. Uh, you are allowed to feel how you want to feel, but when you kind of write in like this, you're projecting on things we did not say, <laughs> you know. Well, clearly she's talking about the breakfast club. Right. I mean, she's, I mean, I'm not saying she's even, she's not even saying we said this stuff. She said, well, why did the breakfast club do this? Email the Breakfast Club. Agreed. At Charlemagne, uh, see the God or whatever on Twitter. At Jess Hilarious, get in her comments. How the fuck would I know? Um, <laughs> I would. The difference between me and the Breakfast Club is I'd never even have her on here because I'm not a fucking shill anyway. Um, Candace Owens is not anti-black. She just happens to call out the truths of the dynamic relationship between the Democratic Party and black people over the years, which has not always been good. This is why I say it's an amazing rebrand and that some dummies will fall for it because that is what she is peddling for the last seven days. And you have erased the last 
X amount of years that we've known of Candace Owens as a grifter, as a charlatan, as a person that traffics in anti-blackness, as a person that covets races, as a person that pals around with white supremacists, you have now erased that and said, well, the only days that count are the last seven when she got fired and seems to be making some sort of move towards black people with this bullshit. Like, oh, here we go. I'll just flip it into black empowerment. But it's still the same bullshit. Um, Because she said niggas can dance and play sports good and make her laugh. She's not anti-black anymore. I mean, listen, I hope you are giving money to our, to all our stuff. Okay. I hope you're premium. You're not. I hope you're, you know, doing all this stuff for us and giving us your money. Because if if that's all it takes, we doing way better than Candace. I just, I'm just saying. We put on for the community more than she does. When, who the fuck does she help in our community? Only time she's showing up is to be like, here is a black outlet that will let me be on and say the shit I be saying. Yeah. But she don't put black people on. She don't pop, kick it with black people. She ain't belonging to no black organizations. The only time she fucked with the NAACP was when they helped her sue for racial discrimination. And after that, she's decided that racism doesn't exist. She said racism is not real. Black people are just playing victims and making it up. Well, bitch, you were suing for racial discrimination. Now explain that if racism does exist. Oh, I can explain it. It's a goddamn grift. That's what it is. How you can talk to yourself into falling for that is beyond me. It's like, do you have to think consciously to breathe? You have to be like, ooh, breathe in, breathe out. All right, you got to do that a million times a day. Because how the fuck else can you fall for that? It's just, it's not even like a, 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 a big trick. Like, it's not even like a, damn, she got us. Like, it's it's an obvious, like, oh, within the last seven days that she needs a job, suddenly, as she pivots to her own brand, it's, hey, Black people exist, and, uh, hey, it's me, Candace Owens. I'm cool, right? No one's going to ask her at the, in that soft shoe interview. None of those motherfuckers are going to ask her about George Floyd or something and, and be like, hey, you shouldn't even be on here with that shit you said. No, it's, it's hey, it's our buddy Candace, you know? Let's, they'll they'll use that interview in the future and be like, hey, remember when she said this? That was cool, right? See, she can't just be knowing, guys. <laughs> hey, we mm-hmm. just, hey, she was just kicking it with us. We don't know. Yeah, and also, black people aren't stupid as a collective. And it's one of those things where um, people have different interactions and different dealings with black people. And some people have been personally hurt and personally scarred by black people directly. And for some of them, they internalize that and go, fuck all y'all niggas. I've been hurt. Why are we even making up this story for her? Why are you giving her any credit? That's not what happened to her. That's not the story she tells. And it's not true. She was kicking it with black people. She wanted money and she pivoted to this. I'm actually against Democrats. And I and she was the other thing she did that get rose her to fame is she was one of the contrarians that said Trump's gonna win before he was even considered even a, a favorite in the primary. Once that happened, she became the hey, I'm the black person that okay. said Trump was gonna win. Y'all need to put me on your platforms. The white people glommed on because it was like, oh, here's a black person we can throw out like a Pokemon towards any racism and misogyny and go, well, this black woman d- doesn't a- agree. You know, this bitch just said if she was on a plane and a black pilot was there, like, it's okay to be like, oh, I don't feel comfortable with a black pilot flying. But Mandy's writing in to tell us that she's not anti-black. What the fuck world are we living in? She is anti-black. Yeah, we not finna, I'm not finna entertain bullshit, Mm -hmm. period. You know, I hate that I'm even giving her this, the rise that is getting out of me, but and this might be the last time we read anything from her, but it needs to be fucking said, you know, because I knew people would fall for this dumb shit, you know, whether you're trolling or you're legitimately stupid. I've seen people say stupid shit like this all day, like people that, hey, you know what, man, you got to hear her out. Hey, you know what? I never really had a problem with her. Yes, the fuck you did. You did. You either that or you weren't paying attention until seven days ago, and now you've decided you don't have a problem with the last seven days of shit she said because you won't know nothing else. But I don't forget. I look it up. Um, 
I know there's no such thing as a perfect political party, but I've been doing my own research on the policies and procedures of both parties over the years in regards to black people that has left me in astonishment and somewhat shame. I know I'm going to ruffle your feathers at times in regards to politics, but I'm just navigating the uncharted waters that I've never thought I would dip my toes in. If this doesn't get read, I get it. No respect lost. Well, respect lost on my part. <laughs> and I don't think we'll be reading anything you write in again. Fuck that. This is like, is I only want to deal with facts. If we can't even be real about what Candace Owens is and what she's done in the past, what fucking... What is the use of your opinion? What's the use of your feedback? Like this, this you might as well wrote up and be like, Trump ain't that bad. I don't know why y'all saying he racist. Like this, who she's who she supports, by the way. You know, like it, this is the insanity that we're dealing with as a society right now with the revisionist history. You know, she mocked Juneteenth, says made up and ghetto. Just hope everyone enjoy. Ha ha ha. You know, it's all fun and Jokes to her. She don't fuck with us. The fuck are you talking about? She not. She don't want to be in the community. So how the fuck are you going to use, we're not a monolith. You know what, nigga? We're not a monolith. But that doesn't mean that everyone is protected under some blanket of like, hey, man, black people just be, we just all different. No, we're not a monolith. If you murder somebody in my fucking family, yeah, we're not a monolith, but that don't give you a pass. I'm like, oh, well, shit, then. I mean, Hey, black people ain't a monolith. You know, uh, sure, you 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 helped the KKK kill some niggas, but hey, black people ain't a monolith. We all, takes all kinds, different strokes for all kinds of different black folks. Fuck out of here. Um, but yeah, there's just, you can Google her racism. You can Google her uh, anti-black history. Um, the documentary that she uh, did against George Floyd that said he's a drug addict and a bad person and a criminal and died of a drug overdose and and not nothing else. Uh, when Kanye West said slavery was a choice, she glommed on to him immediately. Mm-hmm. Immediately. With t-shirts and shit. I remember she took, that. She, she has a picture with Kanye West wearing a White Lives Matter uh, t-shirt. Um, so, yeah, it's to, to think that you could write in here with this tripe with this bullshit is such a uh, disrespect to our platform. And you already were on the fence with, I want to be contrarian and write in every once in a while. This is the last straw for me. Fuck you. Don't write in again. Anything else for your banter? Mm-mm. All right, cool. All right, let's move on guys. You know how it is. Time to get to some news. We all love news around here. Love working for myself. <laughs> I was working on somebody else's platform. It'd be like, you can't be telling people fuck you don't write in. <laughs> Guess what? Anyway, um, news. Crazy news day. Crazy. Follow up to Diddy's news. Uh, he sold all his revolt TV shares to an anonymous buyer today. What? Yeah. This out the blue. I mean, I wouldn't call this out the blue. I mean, but... not out the blue, but but, <laughs> but we just not hearing about it. Just, it's probably something that's been in the works. It's an anonymous buyer for an undisclosed sum, uh, but we're told the company remains black owned. So who would he have sold it to? Right. Is it Byron Allen? No, is it? Um, I have no idea who he would have sold this to. Mm-mm. Um, but yeah, so he sold off this revolt stuff, um, which he had He's already that ha- from the beginning, right? Of, I, I don't remember. I don't know okay. how if he founded it or not, right? But okay. I know he definitely had been working there. He was inactive from the network after that. Um, after last November, 
when a lot of the controversy started with these accusations. He and started shit. kind of backing he, down. He stepped down yeah. like, oh, guys, I'm not running it anymore. But, you know, a lot of times people do that till the heat dies down or they kind of run it through a shadow of like whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, he could still be technically running it through a shadow of whoever he sold it to. We don't know who he sold it to. Agreed. You know, it's, I don't think he's married or anything, but, it, you know, you sell it, quote, unquote, to somebody you trust. And then you just run it through them. Like people do that to get around the shit too. But um, yeah, that so he did that. He also had an alleged associate arrested on drug charges during a plane stop. Um, his name is Brendan Paul. He used to play for the University of Syracuse basketball. Um, white dude. Uh, and it happened around the same time that all the homes got raided. He's booked under two serious drug allegations. Um, uh, they said they uh, discovered cocaine and marijuana edibles, both substances they allege amount to felony charges in the sunny state of Florida. Um, it's revealed that collaboration between Homeland Security and Customs and Border Protection was more than just routine. In the midst of their coordinated effort, they stumbled upon the suspect's drugs neatly tucked away in the travel luggage. Um, according to officers, Paul owned up to the bags being his. Um, the substances didn't look suspicious at the testing. They were confirmed to be the real deal. Uh, he since managed to bail out. So uh, now people are like, is it a drug thing? Was Diddy even the target of it? Is this even about that sex trafficking thing? Maybe it's something else. But then, of course, they arrested mm -hmm. both of his two of his sons. So I don't mm -hmm. know. And then it turns out. He supposedly was not on that plane yesterday. He was not trying to escape the country, uh, even though his plane may have been whatever, because you can track the plane. He wasn't on it, so that turned out to not be true, but we were doing the show live when that dropped, so, you know, allegedly, allegedly sprinkle in some plausible deniability and shit. Um, let's see what else is happening. Um, did you see the bridge in Baltimore? No, I don't think I did. So I seen a bridge. Okay, and I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know. Can you just elaborate? I didn't know if you saw that, a bridge. Yeah, I just saw. Hey, I okay. just saw. And what was the bridge doing? It was falling down. Okay, yes, then that is the bridge. Okay, obviously, what other bridge <laughs> made the news today? Okay, no problem. <laughs> I was all like, y'all niggas be posting anything. I don't know. No, it was a bridge in Baltimore that um. A so it seems like a um what do you call it a container ship, which uh, I used to work in logistics at a company that the same company is involved in this Maersk, and they uh, every year just about I would take a tour of our Charleston um, dock, our pier, the port. Those boats are humongous. I would go on this on this uh on this tour and you you could see how they load the ships. You go on the ship, you take a tour of the ship, see how it works. Um and the thing about those ships that I think maybe you don't know if you only watch like TV shows and movies or you just don't think about this shit. Those ships are fucking huge. Yes they are. And when I say huge, I mean like a downtown building huge like this is not a oh it's big for a boat it's a it's a yacht it's a boat i saw someone call it a boat today oh, that's it's a, a fucking boat. container ship dog it's a merchant vehicle it it's is a huge ass vessel and they are typically loaded to the brim with all kinds of um with all kinds of like materials and stuff you know amazon uh we used to ship stuff from uh we used to ship stuff from the U.S. to Afghanistan and, and Iraq during the when there was a war. That's how they got all those military vehicles, Humvees and shit over there. And they would ship them back to give to the police departments uh, years later. Um, so I say all of that to say some people were like, this is the problem with this is an infrastructure thing. Right. Why did that bridge fall? America not doing enough for infrastructure. Um, the 100 ton cargo ship, um, hit this bridge, causing it to the collapse to 100 ton, 100 ton, mighty. 
did 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 they not that they go up underneath like the trucks be doing was like oops my bad and hit the bottom of it no um that's not what they were trying to do um it was a it was 1 30 a.m it was a power failure in the ship which caused it to go off course oh then a fire broke out on the ship when they by the time the power cut on it was right before they hit the bridge and it was too late Oh no! Oh, so that boat didn't need, they didn't even know where the boat was kind of in the water. They didn't. What do you mean they didn't know? The power went out, so apparently nobody knew where, like, nobody could steer the boat or get the boat right, and then the power Yeah, came. whoever was on the boat did not have the ability to steer the boat. They oh. knew where the boat was. They were on the boat, so they just couldn't get it to go the right way. It's like if you're driving a car yeah. and the steering wheel collapsed on you, you know where the car is. Yes, and uh, uh, yes, and, and, when and the I, bridge is not a bridge that goes up. It's a br- just a bridge. Okay, just, it's just it's you're not, not supposed to take a boat un- over by that bridge. Right. It's it's not one of them boats that go up and they go through. It's, it's like the so the bridge is flat and supposed to be flat. It's not and it's not one of them bridges that go with that, that split. Okay. No, and the reason the reason why I was saying that is because in my mind, I was like, oh. The power went out, like you don't have any control of the bridge of the boat. So where the boat drifts to, you don't have any control over. Like you said, you know where the boat. So they knew the boat was going towards the bridge. Then yeah, they just. It was, I'm with you now. They okay. couldn't stop it, and there's nothing you can do if you're on the bridge. It's, right, because you didn't have like the power to actually correct it through the boat itself. I'm with yeah, you now. They were trying to get it back on, but it didn't work. It hit a column supporting the bridge. The entire bridge collapsed within seconds, and the ship burst into flames. Ooh. Um, they're still looking for at least six people uh, that were working there that they're now presuming is probably dead. Of course, the water was extreme, was cold. Um, you saw cars fall into the cold water. Oh, right. Two people- survivors got rescued, oh. but... Because people probably crossing the bridge, not realizing that this was happening like feet away from them. Yeah, I mean, they probably saw the boat approaching, but I mean, if they saw it, it was also late at night and right. the power on the boat was out. Um, I mean, it's just scary and unfortunate. Um, people were immediately blaming infrastructure and saying our bridges are old and a bridge can't take a hit from a boat. It's not designed to take a hit from a boat. <laughs> I'm not saying, and you know, I get it. People are like, I'm not a civil a civil engineer or nothing. Right. Then shut the fuck up. But I know we're on t- social media, so you right. can't help yourself. You got to say something. I just feel like if a boat hit a bridge, it shouldn't. Right. Well, that's because it's not about feelings. There's no bridge on the fucking earth can, that can take this. Mm. It's like if Godzilla hit a bridge. Right. It's going to crumble. The bridge is going to be damaged heavily. Period. You know, maybe now people are like, oh shit, there by the grace of God go I. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's like that. You know, that's why the shit can should never happen, you know. Um so people were trying to do that cuz I think the answer to everything on social media is always like capitalism caused this. Uh, you know, like some macro issue as opposed to, well, this is just a tragic catastrophe. It's like saying, it's like those motherfuckers that believe that the Twin Towers should have stood after planes went into them. And they're like, it shouldn't really collapse if you think about it. It's like, there's no fucking building on the earth that you can put a fucking 747 full of fuel and just plunge it into it and it's going to be standing. And you talk about something that's tons, like it is probably way more than the bridge itself. Yeah, it's just not, it's just not, there's nothing that, there's no planning that can stop this, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you th- can't put no bumper to bump it in another direction or some shit. Yeah, it's just, it is what it is. It's, it fucking sucks. Um, so then right-wing people were blaming Pete Buttigieg. What? Because he's the Secretary of Transportation. He has nothing to do with this. And so they're like, it's his fault, infrastructure. Uh, Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg to address Baltimore Bridge collapse as soon as he's done chest feeding, said a conservative Twitter account. Um, Make it stop. Please make it stop. I'm revoking Pete's gay card. Enough is enough. This is George Santos. Uh, 
saying that the guy who got kicked out of the out of Congress for being a liar. Um. Yeah, it's just fucking. It's ridiculous. Um, and then they're they're saying, oh, he, it's racism that caused the bridge collapse and shit. It's just, uh, but you know, we're not a monolith, so we have to respect those opinions, of course. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that it's it's just very unfortunate and sad. And um, uh, people were saying like there's gonna be a lot of fallout from it because obviously it's a bridge that like I think thirty one thousand people cross it every day. Also, all of a sudden, you're gonna have people that can't cross. They had to go through the city or through tunnels, oh, which is gonna no. be a nightmare. Um, I hope they can work from home because if you can, baby, this might be the time. Well, JL Covan that. doesn't hope that. JL Covan says, "Get your ass to work, no matter what, slave." Nope. No sir. You, well, shut up, boy. You look. I need to look you in the eye when Master talking. Mm-hmm. You know. But um, well, Karen, look, we're not a monolith, and all mm-hmm. opinions are the same, and they all mm-hmm. equal weight, and they all matter. Mm-hmm. All right, get this well. Microsoft team smile. All right, well. All right, that's just that's what he said. Um, so then uh the other thing is like Amazon is on the other side of the bridge, and that's a lot of stuff that needs to be shipped in and out of there. So, like, it's who knows, but the fallout is gonna be massive for a long time, in addition to just the lives lost mm-hmm. that and you have to rebuild that bridge. Yeah, and they and they said something like, and you have to get all that debris out of the water. Oh shit! Yeah, you do. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. They said one dude got like rescued and was like, "I'm not going to the hospital," and just like got got went home. Like he was like he was wet or whatever. I guess he just wringed his clothes out and said, "I gotta get home." So mm-hmm. I don't know what was going on with him. But In- insurance. He's like, like I ain't got time. Mm-mm. I, I got I gotta get back. Gotta gotta be there for my kids when they wake up in the morning. Y- y'all be good. <laughs> The other news that we didn't really cover uh, the other day, but it happened the other day. Uh, Moscow had a concert hall uh, attacked by terrorists. I was seeing clips of that. Yeah, I've listened to people talk about it. I think the most interesting or scary thing about it is the Islamic State like took credit for it. They, they put pictures of the culprits like up to be like, it was us. We did this. Oh no! And it's because of like Russia's meddling and with this, that, and the other. And Putin and them said the United States and Ukraine did this, and we just gonna step up the attacks on Ukraine. What the fuck is happening? Yeah, yeah. And there's video footage. It's obviously those four men. They've actually put out. I don't know how. I mean, I'm, it must make sense if you're in Russia. Because I imagine your they control what media you can see, so I guess it makes sense. Or just they've been living like this so long. They're like, if that's what they say, whatever. But you would think a hundred and something people being killed, a hundred and thirty nine people at least being killed. You would think that would make a lot of people feel away. Maybe there's just nothing they can do about it. That's a possibility <clears throat> too, and. You know, from what I've been hearing on the news, they were saying that the United States actually told them this was going, it's a high possibility within the next, you know, 48, 72 hours that this was going to happen. Y'all might want to, you know, not have these events. And they were saying, fuck y'all, basically. Mm-hmm. We're going to have, we're going to do what the fuck we want to do. Putin himself said it. He said, basically, like, fuck them. This is misinformation. Carry on. And then this attack happened. And they're like, oh, see, this is the, the West doing it. Um, they did post pictures of the four dude who um the four men who are uh from the Central Asian Republic of Tajik Tajikistan, um, but work in Russia on temporary or expired visas. They named them, and they all face maximum sentences of life in prison. They also like they shot up the place. They threw some type of flammable liquid on it and then like tried to burn it down. People died from all of that stuff. Um, But then Russia also put pictures online of them torturing the guys. Like, and like medieval shit, like hooking up batteries to their <laughs> testicle shit. Oh no! And then, you know, they posted their pictures of them in court and they're all like beat up. 
Like Russia definitely went with the like we getting revenge if we can't like we we we'll we'll get a we'll get vengeance if we can't get justice, you know. Um like this is one of the, the, the suspects look at him. Like he's clearly been beat the fuck up. You know, and I'm not saying I have a lot of sympathy for these dudes. Obviously, uh what they did is horrendous, but yeah, it's just they, they fucked them up. Oh, yes, they did. Everybody swole up. Yeah, um, like Russia don't play, and I guess when you don't have to really worry too much about democracy laws and rules, it's like we fucking people up, right? So what y'all gonna do? Um, but yeah, it's uh that happened. I have nothing really to add much to it. Mm-hmm. Other um, than sounds like people using this as, as an excuse to continue to, for war. Yeah, which they already were at. Mm -hmm. Uh, Russell Simmons was surprised by a process server in Bali. So Drew Dixon, the woman who uh, alleges that he sexually assaulted her, had that documentary that I watched. uh, I think it was called Off the Record or On the Record. I can't remember. Um, uh, But I watched it before. This is back when everybody shamed Oprah out of supporting it, which I still have uh, tremendous issues with the way that people handled that mm-hmm. and the way I like, I, I still feel how I feel about the way that people would put solidarity as a cover for motherfuckers that are abusive. You know, all of a sudden it was, well, he, I mean, Oprah knows Harvey Weinstein's and yet she's doing this. The Russell was like, well, she didn't think, she wasn't helping Harvey Weinstein rape people. Right. The fuck? She wasn't silent on Harvey. Anyway, all right, whatever. The point being, um, Russell Simmons has been in Bali trying to avoid, you know, any legal consequences um, because they don't have, like, extradition and shit like that. He can't. So, um, apparently... Uh, Drew Dixon had filed a lawsuit against him, but you need to be able to serve him. So they had a process server sneak into the resort where he lives, or I, I, I say sneak, but get past security. I don't even know if they snuck in or just whatever. And um, it's called the GDAS, GDAS Bali Health and Wellness Resort, and he, he owns it. Oh, it was- Oh, he owns yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he owns it, girl. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is. Uh, process server named Daniel John Ayub arrived around 12.30 p.m. He local employee time. employee of the month, ain't he? Yep. He managed to get through two security checkpoints. The fact that this man had two security checkpoints. <laughs> uh, because Just because he's so scared of being held accountable. Once he entered, he told staff members he was interested in the resort. He sat in the restaurant area, ordered some refreshments in hope of spotting Simmons. After waiting for an hour and not seeing him, he asked for a tour of the resort. But just a few minutes later, Simmons came up in the restaurant, into the restaurant area, stood right in front of where Ayub was seated. I recognize him as the person named in the service papers as Russell Simmons. Uh, He is a well-known celebrity and widely known in Bali, Indonesia, as well as in the United States and other places. He then sat, Simmons sat down with a group of people, began conversing. Ayub said he waited a few moments and then made his move. I said, excuse me, Mr. Simmons, sorry to interrupt your meeting. I then handed him the service documents in the envelope. I said, this is for you. He was caught off guard. He grabbed the envelope envelope and said, what's this from? I replied, you've been served from the state of New York, Simmons. Then quickly dropped the envelope on the table and said, ah, shit. Ah, fuck. Ah, ah, fuck, shit. So <laughs> he ain't expecting to get them papers. Uh, you went back to his own table, waited for the bill. Simmons made a phone call, possibly to his attorney, asking for some advice on what to do. Uh, by that time, I had paid his tab and was ready to leave. He exited the resort. He could hear Simmons calling security staff, questioning how the process server managed to get in to serve him the lawsuit, which is required by law. Honestly, I think Usher did it. Okay, I think we would we we were, we did too much. We yeah we went yelled at Usher for hanging out with him, but I think Usher left a couple doors unlocked on the side, like when you let people sneak in the movie theater. These are my confessions. And I think this man slid in through the side door because because of Usher, and uh, looks like we all owe him an apology. 
Uh, the legal action was filed. There. What if it's just employees that are like, I also think he's disgusting. You you can get through security. Well, you here to serve him? Yeah, go ahead. He'll be in here in about an hour. <laughs> he got past two of them. Can ah. I get you anything to drink while you wait to serve him? Did it end my six? This what is happening? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, um, of course. Uh, Good afternoon, 007. Of course, uh, Simmons says she she all the women are lying and they just want to be famous for being sexually assaulted because you know how we love to make women famous for being sexually assaulted. Oh my goodness, the amount of opportunities! I'm surprised every woman's not doing it. Right. Um. But yeah. Uh. We'll see if anything else happens. But that was just another thing that happened in the news. Uh. Robert F. Kennedy is expected to announce his VP pick. Oh wait, he already did announce it. This article needs to be updated. Uh. He picked Nicole Shanahan, not Aaron Rodgers, not Killer Mike. Um. And I forget who the other person he was supposed to be considering. Uh. So. I guess this ticket, which will come in a distant, distant, distant third at minimum, I mean, at best, um, I guess they got the ticket. I'm pretty sure they won't be doing any debates because they don't have enough votes. Mm -hmm. And also, Trump's not even going to be doing debates. So He sure ain't. Yeah. But uh, I think me and Akon said it won't be the first time a Shanahan has taken Rodgers out of contention or something. Oh, no. Solid joke. Um, let's see. Kansas moves to join Texas and other states in requiring porn sites to verify people's ages. Stop this bullshit, y'all. Stop it. What's interesting though is this may actually because they want people to self-report. Um, and if you self because you can self-report, like, hey, I, I'm reporting this website for having porn on it. It may affect Reddit and like Twitter because those are two websites that allow sexual content to be posted on there. Mm-hmm. They, you know, restrict the age, quote unquote, but you just basically have to say, I'm, uh, yes, I would like to see them titties. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so now maybe you'll see conservatives try to get those sites taken down or age restricted to where people have to show ID to even get on them and shit. Yeah, who y'all vote for matter? Because this is some bullshit. Because all they basically want is people's information to be on these sites for people to break and bust. And then next thing you know, people's information is going to be public and all over the place. And they will use it as reasons to shame people and shit like this. But it's all fucking ridiculous. What, what, like, I do understand you don't want children to have access to things. And I do understand, you know, that there do need to be age restrictions. Please don't get me wrong. But me as an adult, as an adult, I ought to have the right to do these things. Yeah, I think it's interesting um, because I don't think it would even work even the way they want it to work. You know, this idea of like, and then no one will get porn. No, they'll just use VPNs. The The, the main problem I have with this and, and the same thing with the, the anti-sex work people, because they never want to like really get into the the nitty gritty of it. They just like to use their religious puritanical like shame shit on you. Like Mm -hmm. I'm ashamed after I jacked off. Why isn't everyone? Um, The main issue I have with this shit is it's a thing that we've proven you can't outlaw out of existence. No, you can't because you tried it before. It's the same argument with why you need to have people that provide abortion. You have to have it because it's not going to go away because you prayed because you go to church. Now, I can't. Nah, no, not, not everyone right. subscribes to your belief system. No, they do not. Some people, the same way you have like a strip club and you can go, I don't think that's good for people's self-esteem. Well, too fucking bad. Some people want money and some people want to give people money and see them take their clothes off. Now, how do we regulate that so that it works in the best way possible? Because it's going to fucking exist. Yes, and is. every other society that denies it, America tries to look down on. Everybody else in the burqa is a bad. They don't, they doing religious mm-hmm. wrong. They hate women. But when it comes to our bullshit, it's like, no, no, no. We need to put, y'all need to put a burqa on, but for good reason. Uh, no sex for money at all, guys. Stop it. Like, no, people are doing it anyway. So that's the reason I, I get upset by it. It's like, 
we can't deny our way out of this shit. Just accept that it is a thing, accept that it is happening, and then we can maybe come up with some actual solutions to it. Um, and, and you know that age verification isn't going to be the thing to do it anyway. Mm-hmm. And that's after these sites all clean themselves up to, to, to be above scrutiny with the uh, allegations of like, hey, this isn't regulated enough, which I agree with. Um, it wasn't regulated enough. So they did do a better job of moderating and cleaning it up and keeping like uh, stuff off of that they can't verify. And people are st- the Republicans just want to make it no porn. That is yes, that, that is what the they want. Point. That is what they they keep lying like it's going to be incremental. No, it's just this. It'll be something else. If they if they pass age verification and everyone goes and puts their license on there, there'll be another thing that'll be like, whoa, no, no, no. Also, this. Until there's just no porn. That's what they want. Um, I thought this is interesting. Um, it's a video that's been going viral. Um, and uh, we're going to play it right after uh, the break. It just gets on my nerves because it's like I gotta listen to you do 15 minutes every week on Sydney Sweeney's titties, but porn is too much. It's like JL Coven, wake the fuck up. All right, let's get to he's <laughs> taking a lot of lot of strays today. For no reason. No, nah, I got my reasons. Uh, <laughs> All right, this video went viral. I'll we'll play it and we'll let Karen uh we'll, we'll see. This will be our first time probably seeing it. Yeah. So I just met Anthony Mackey. And let me just say, rudest human being alive. So I live in New Orleans. I'm here for spring break. Apparently, Anthony Mackey lives here too. I pulled up to a gas station. Here Anthony Mackey comes in this huge fucking truck, all blacked out, all fucking sleek, windows down. So it's like, also, if you don't want people to come up to you and fucking say how much they appreciate your work, why the fuck are all your windows down and you're blasting music, smoking a fucking cigar? So I park my car, getting ready to pump my gas. I see Anthony Mackey across the fucking lot. I gently walk up to him being like, oh my God, I'm so sorry to bother because I know celebrities are on time. I know celebrities got shit to do. I understand that. So I walk up being very, very, very respectful, very, very, very open-minded, being like, hey, I'm so sorry to bother you. Tell me why Anthony Mackie did this. No. No. To my face. No. And then just went back to what he was doing, having me standing there. I was standing there in front of Anthony Mackie being like, oh, should I, should I leave? Like, should I, should I go? When I tell you, all I wanted to do was walk up to that man. First of all, thank you for his time for even looking at me and then saying how much I thought appreciated his work. And that was it. That was it. I just wanted to be like, hey, Anthony Mackie, like, it's so nice to meet you. Like, I'm so like, uh, your work is actually. Let me just say right now, you're fake as fuck with the whole like, I didn't want to bother him. I just wanted to, well, you didn't bother. He said, no, unbothered. Go back to your life. No, you didn't really mean that. You did want his attention. You did want to stop him from what he was doing. You did want him to acknowledge you. You wanted a moment and he didn't give it to you. So now he's a piece of shit. And we supposed to all sit, go, hey, she's sitting in her car and she's very angry. She must be the one who's right phenomenal i'm so glad i got to meet you like have an amazing day that was it that was it that was all i wanted this also isn't helping this this tantrum is not helping sell me on the man anthony maggie should have really talked to you (laughs) but these fucking celebrities make it seem like we're fucking roaches and rats bitch i'm pumping my the fucking i'm at the same gas station as you bitch that's what he's thinking. 
It's, it's, imagine this. And I know it's not hard to imagine for most women, right? Period. You're at the gas station pumping your gas, minding your business. Some nigga comes over to you and says, hey, hey, ma, let me, hey, I just want to say you looking good today. How many of y'all know if you had the ability to say no without feeling endangered? How many of you would absolutely be like, no, this is not happening. I don't want strange people coming over to me when I'm minding my business. It's not crazy to, to, to want that. It's not even a celebrity thing. It's just a fucking person thing. We on the same level playing field. I'm pumping the same gas you pumping right now. Like, you can't even look at me. Even if he was like, oh, like, hi, like, shush, like, you know, like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm on the low right now, but it's so nice to meet you. That would have been amazing. But I get a hand to the face fucking stranded looking stupid anthony mackey the rudest celebrity the rudest celebrity you make celebrities look bad you do you make them i feel like she's making people look bad. regular people look bad look all bad. right karen i'm sorry I'm, I'm 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 biasing the audience what do you think yeah this is a lot um I've heard Anthony Mackey do interviews before, and he's talked about this in the past, how, you know, he, he doesn't care too much for that particular interaction. He said in the past he's ran away from people and things like this. Mm -hmm. And people think just because you are a celebrity, you're built for all these interactions, all these different type of interactions. Uh, you know, I even uh, had an interview with, uh, I heard an interview with uh, Jill Scott years ago where Jill Scott was saying how, when she first realized she was famous, she was just doing like normal shopping. And she said she was at the mall and all of us like, like by herself. And all of a sudden people recognized her. And she said, people would just swarmed at her. She said she literally had to go and hide and had anxiety and things like that. People just assume just because you're a celebrity that you consistently want this interaction. And people also assume because you're a celebrity, <clears throat> that any time that they demand your attention, you are obligated to give it to them no matter what. And that's not so, you know, because celebrities are people too. You have some celebrities, no problem at all. And you have other celebrities, they're like, no. She sounds entitled to me. Also, uh, people are like this. It's not even, you don't even have to be a celebrity. Like, obviously being a celebrity informs his experience with this to be like right i know what this is already i would prefer not to do this correct and he has the right to do that yeah but people do that. i do this shit all the time you know and i don't mean like someone yelling i'm a big fan but just someone coming over and it's like look i saw you asked the last 12 people for change i ain't got it i'm walking straight into the store you know okay y'all work for t-mobile y'all want me to sign up i'm coming to check my mail I don't, I'm not, I don't need to be polite and nice. People even prey on the fact that we have politeness like that. Yes, Where there's do. like, well, I don't want to be rude to the T-Mobile person. So now I'm in a fucking three minute conversation that I don't need to be in. Cause you're just trying to sell me something. You're not right. actually interested in me. You want that selfie. You want whatever the fuck It's understand. He, his actions are understandable to me. I don't even think it was rude. I don't either. I don't think it was mean. It was mm -mm. Just, no. I don't and she didn't this. accept that as an answer. Right. Just like the same way, I think when Cardi B was pregnant, somebody was, then she was like, no, don't take a picture of me. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm feeling the same way. And act like she was a piece of shit. She was fucking pregnant. She just didn't feel like doing it. And sometimes people, like I said, people have this ownership to celebrities, you know? And it's, oh, the thing is she went over there, which was okay, not okay, but you know, she went over there he had she the shot her shot. It didn't work. Right. The end. The end. When he everybody told like you no, he should have. She should have walked through. That should have been the end, end, end of the transaction. Everybody like boundaries till they bound. Yes. Right. Until it's, they hit the bound. Everybody right. love they bound. Everybody love they boundary till they out of bounds, and then it's like, hey, hey, hey. Uh, fuck your boundaries. You're an asshole for that. Uh, um, Holly Berry mistakes perimenopause for herpes. Sparks an awareness campaign. She had a personal health, health scare that turned out to be pivotal education experience about perimenopause. Speaking at a prestigious A Day of Unreasonable Conversation Summit held at the Getty Center in Los Angeles alongside Jill Biden, 
Barry opened up about a particularly alarming health scare that initially seemed to be something entirely different. Um, she uh, it recounted a painful experience after intimacy with her boyfriend, Van Hunt, which led her to believe she might have contracted herpes, described by her doctor as potentially the worst case they had ever seen. However, after undergoing tests, they were both relieved to find out they were negative for the virus. It was only after this scare that Barry realized her symptoms were indicative of perimenopause, a traditional phase leading to menopause. Mm -hmm. Her fr expressed frustration and concern, uh, she expressed frustration and concern over the lack of awareness and preparation for that from her healthcare provider regarding these symptoms, which include mood changes, night sweats, and notably vaginal dryness, as outlined by John Hopkins Medicine. Yeah, you're talking about premenopause. Yeah, you, you perimenopause is what it's called. Oh, perimenopause. Mm. Oh, but I, I mean it sounds like it is premenopause, but I just want to oh, that, that's that, that's that's the technical yeah, that's name the term for it. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh uh and also, you know, kind of read up on it, you have hair loss, some people have memory loss. Um and I've kind of read up on it a lot of black and brown people their menopause, a premenopause, kind of perimenopause, lasts longer than almost any other group. For a lot of black and brown women, ours could stretch up to 20 years of just, uh, just going through different symptoms until you get to the point of like a full-fledged menopause uh, process. And, you know, it's one of those things where, like you said, they have information out there. Uh, they have podcasts. They have all this information out there. But for a lot of women, they still kind of go through it blindly, you know. Um, and like I say, I haven't dealt with, you know, a lot of symptoms. I've dealt with some some of the symptoms, you know. And it's one of the things where it's scary because you don't really, every, every person going through the phase responds differently to different things. For some people, it might be, I can drink alcohol, I can't drink it too late. If I do, I break out in a sweat, you know. For some people... You know, all of a sudden, intimacy is in this fun. Like it, it, it is all over the place, and it varies per person. And that's why it's kind of hard to uh, when you're going through the phase. For some people, they go to their doctors, and some of the doctors be like, "Well, ain't nothing we can do," you know, or or either they'll they, they don't even know how to properly diagnose you because they just go, "Well, this is just what happens," you know, and things like that. And so it's, it's kind of a balance. Some people go on uh, hormonal therapy to kind of balance out even, even in, in the uh, uh, premenopausal phases of it, uh, because it's just so bad for people. And this is before you get into full fledged menopause. Yeah. I know one of the symptoms also is like forgetfulness um, and getting hungry and like leaving people to go get breakfast and getting lost um, while they in the hospital under, you know, life, <laughs> under that's certain, one of them under life and death circumstances. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying well, to give you I, an well, out. Well, well, I guess I'm going through it then. I'm trying to give you an mm -hmm. out. Uh, mm -hmm. NBC News plans. You to, leave me alone. NBC News plans. To, I mean, you left me alone, so I guess that's fair. <laughs> NBC News plans to dump Rona McDaniel after staff revoked for her hiring. Yeah, so MSNBC hired planned to hire Rona McDaniel. I think they actually did hire her um, as a paid contributor. And um, they announced this on Chuck Todd's show, I believe, um, or some show. And at the time that they announced it, it had been worked. At the time that they did the interview, I'm sorry, they had planned to interview her. But by the time the interview aired or by the time they did the interview, she was actually officially hired for her. NBC and MSNBC and all this stuff. So what followed after this announcement was an unprecedented series of on-air rebukes by Rachel Maddow, Joy Reid, Nicole Wallace. Oh, they was like, we're not having it. Everybody went on the air and was like, man, fuck her. Rachel Maddow did a, you know how she do. She like tell a story. She did a whole segment of like Rona McDaniel's history, how she was covering for Trump with the election lies, all that stuff. That's it back was, to that normalizing shit. You can't make it normal because no, bitch, no. You said the shit. You did the shit. You need to be held fucking accountable. It's like calling Candace Owens not anti-black. No, I'm not participating in it. We don't play those games over here. And so enough of them did it that now NBC is planning to drop McDaniel. Um... 
and it's also reported that she's seeking legal representation. And here's what sounds was gonna sound hypocritical, but I I I felt the same way with Megyn Kelly. I actually hope she get all the money. I do too. I do too. Cause fuck them. Because some white because dude made them. a decision to bring her on there because she's some pretty eye candy. And they not even pretty eye candy. Nope. That's not Ronald McDaniel. That was Megan Kelly. Oh, my bad. But, but but somebody decided, some white dude most likely decided to bring her on air because she made good ratings because they because they want trying to reach trying to be for everybody. Because the people at the top are white dudes that think it's just differences of opinion. We should just have everybody on. Right. And there's no extremeness where they will go. This is out of bounds. And once you say something like this is okay, you essentially make it in bounds. You now have legitimized election fraud, mm-hmm. something that it seems would behoove you as a news organization that is not Fox or OAN. It will behoove you to not pal around with these motherfuckers. Because them people ain't coming to you. I don't know why y'all think y'all don't get these people to come over there. Yeah, you mean the viewers? Yes. Yeah, but but it's it's always some white people shit, par, uh, performative impartiality, where they bring these motherfuckers on and it's like, look, guys, we're good people. We had. We got some people on that don't even believe Joe Biden's a president. It's such bullshit. And I'm sh- and shout out to them for standing up in solidarity. I wish they would have used that voice like this when black people get fired over there for doing their jobs, you know. Um, but at least they took a stand against this extreme bullshit. I'm glad they And it did. seems to have worked. Because somebody was like, I don't want that bitch as my coworker. No. Don't nobody want to be having her own, interviewing her, talking about her all the time. No, she lied. Why is she here? She got fired because Trump won again this year and Trump and his people are clearing house because they probably want to take the money and try to pay his legal bills and of use it course. strictly for his campaign and not fund anybody else that's a Republican. Mm-mm. And <clears throat> so they had to get her up out of there. Mm-hmm. And so now she's like, I need a job. Here come MSNBC. You know, trying to do this. MSNBC president Rashida Jones, who initially had signed off on bringing on McDaniel, had to assure her progressive channel's talent that McDaniel wouldn't appear on their sacred airwaves, as Nicole Wallace put it. Yeah, um, I'm like and you. Rashida Jones uh, is is the MSNBC uh, person is black, so that's that wasn't a white person that saw, that was trying to. Sign off on this. Now, maybe it was above her head or not, but she is the president of MSNBC. So she said it wouldn't happen on MSNBC. Um, but yeah, that is, is, I'm glad they took a stand. I think it's proof that you can stop this bullshit if enough people stand up against it. Mm-hmm. But if these motherfuckers barely take a stand on their own news network, it's hard to get them to take a stand on anything else or to believe them. So that's why they needed to take this stand. Because I'm like, okay, y'all will take a stand at your job. Now I feel like there's some skin in the game. Because if not, it's just you acting like, well, what can we do? Trump had a press conference. We had to cover it. He was lying, but we'll get to that later. Like, nah, we need to be taking a stand. This shit is important. It's 2024. And I love this energy of people not fucking around anymore. This is the kind of thing that happened in 2016 and 2020. Uh-huh. This is exactly the kind of thing that happened. You just go, okay, it's Sean Spicer and shit being on Dance with the Stars. Like, it's mm-hmm. time for people to take a stand and be like, no, you niggas tried to overthrow the motherfucking country. Oh, yes, y'all did. Why are we pretending like that's not what happened? Like, let's just normalize, hey, we're all frat pals here. No. In, in, in eight months, if this motherfucker wins, y'all gonna be acting like, fuck, I can't believe. This was one of the steps on the road paved straight to hell. But yeah, so she I, did the job. I agree, and I'm glad she didn't get it. And I'm glad they, you know, spoke up and spoke out about it. And I'm glad it was like they top tier dogs too, like like you know, like people high, high, high up. They got enough viewers that if y'all yank them off the air, the motherfucking building to burn, like some people that actually y'all get them off the air, y'all gonna lose a lot of listeners. That y'all was like, hey, dog, we can't do this. So I'm glad that they uh, did that because you can't normalize this. And I wouldn't would not want her as my coworker too. And I don't know what made them think that they was just gonna go along to get along. They just assumed that they, they have gonna... in the past. That's true. When they fired, uh, when they fired Tiffany Cross, when they let Melissa Harris Perry go, when uh, like when they have Van Jones on the shit, like they 
they've had other people that are essentially apologists or hey, we just need a contrarian on to disagree with this. They they do these interviews. It's why I said I don't really fuck with cable news. Right. To the chagrin of that one motherfucker that used to be in the chat room all the time. I don't know what happened to him, but I it's like I'm okay with you disagreeing on this one. I don't fuck with cable news. I'm not gonna watch it in my house in general unless it's completely like coincidence or for a couple minutes, just right. because a lot of what I see them doing is placating to the extremes and then basically legitimizing them. Hey, we're going to bring on a scientist who spent their whole life studying and working on climate change. And here's what they think we need to do to save the planet. And we're going to bring on Jim Bob, who has a Twitter account who says climate change isn't real. And I'm going to treat them with equal weight. We're just like, we're going to dunk on them, but we're literally acting like we're sitting at the same table, having an intellectual conversation that's very polite. And all we're really doing is legitimizing this motherfucker. Um, so, yeah, I think that's why they thought they could get away with it. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad they shocked them and was like, no, no means no. Instagram stopped recommending political content and now social media users are noticing. Uh, Instagram has stopped recommending political content to its 2 billion users in February. Uh, but now the campaign season is heating up. People are starting to notice the February announcement from Instagram said it will be limiting political content only from accounts that users don't follow and that users can choose to still see them in their reels, recommendations, and feeds. Um, what I think is interesting, so someone sent me a video about this and was like, look what they did. They took away the political content. You have to go opt in. Go to your settings and turn it back on. And I think they sent me that video so I could be like, yeah, I'm going to go turn it back on. Let me tell Hell you something. I am. Let me tell you something. Thank you, Instagram. That's what I see. All the rest of them need to do that, too. Appreciate you. I don't want to see none of that bullshit. My mind's made up already anyway. Right. And honestly, even from the people I follow, sometimes it gets on my fucking nerves. Yes, it does. Because some of y'all, I'm just following because y'all look good. I don't need to know that what your opinions are on other shit you know i'm scrolling through my ig models next thing i know you posting something like i think trump good but girl if you don't shake that ass come on now that was not the agreement mm -hmm. and you know it you know i don't care if you unfollow me or not okay well i i guess you don't care but ma'am i didn't want to know that you actually do support mitch mcconnell i didn't I didn't need to know, see prayers up. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's ridiculous anyway. And and I don't know why people are getting, it's like, people ask for Facebook and all these places to get out of the politics. They, they say they claim they're part of the reason the election was stolen in 2016, mm -hmm. right? Or the, like the election was hacked and all this stuff. And then here we go, like, no, don't take away the politics. No, take it away. I agree. We have not proven we know how to play with that shit. Mm -mm. I wish I could make it more restrictive. Like, not even from people I follow. I don't want to see it. I already agree. Right. I don't uh, see it at I all. either agree or don't dis or disagree. I actually don't need to see it on this one. Mm -mm. I'm good. Anyway, uh, I just thought that was interesting how angry people were about it. But I guess people get angry about everything now. Yes, they do. Uh, let's see. Because for some people, that's their content. So they're like, how dare you take away my content, basically? That's that. That's literally what you tell them if you're upset about something like that. Mm -hmm. was you're taking away the content, the shit that I spend hours and hours and hours and hours doing versus I need to be actually working at my job. Mm -hmm. I'm in all these Facebook groups arguing with people consistently getting kicked out, joining new ones all of the time. And uh, no, how dare you take, take, because if they take that away, what the fuck am I going to do? Actually get some shit done in your life. You spitting. You are spitting right there. Okay. Other than leaving me at the hospital, that's why I married you. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Because you be spitting. Mm -hmm. All right. Guess uh, I might leave you at the hospital, but I be spitting. It's time to guess the race. 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 All right, guess the race time. You know how to play this game. We already know. So let's just get right into it. A landlord is accused of setting fire in apartment. Say oh, hi. shit, ain't this his prop? Ain't this their property? 
that's probably his defense. He's like, it's my property. <laughs> What's the problem? TurboTax now offers a lifetime guarantee when like, you file what? your taxes. Yeah, yeah. TurboTax guarantees 100% <laughs> accurate calculations <laughs> and maximum refund for the full seven-year life. This thing literally won't let me click the uh, turn the volume down button. That, yeah, that, was, that, was, that was a nice one. That's a good trick. Every time you click the turn the volume down button, it takes you to a website to sign up for whatever it was. All right, but I, I fixed it. All right, here we go. Landlord from Akron has been arrested for arson at a property that he owns on 312 South 10th Street. Now, West Earl Township police say 28-year-old Ronald Frisbee was unhappy with his tenants after a washing machine was broken, and he angrily set fire to a cardboard box inside the apartment early on Saturday morning. He was arrested a few minutes later and now faces charges of felony arson. No one was injured in the fire, and the actual fire itself did very little damage. So you just failed on every level in that, uh, I guess, Frisbee was thrown for a loop when he didn't get <laughs> <laughs> when he didn't get that uh, that rent payment. Mm -mm. Um, but uh, and now he was tossed in jail. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's just you failed at being get, getting your money. You now owe you now had to like pay bail, right? It cost you, you more. failed at burning the place down with a cardboard box. Like you just lost in many different ways. Karen, you know what I'm gonna ask you. Yes. Guess the race of Ronald race. Frisbee the third. Black. Black says Karen. Ronald Frisbee the third is black. Let's check the chat room. Oh, that's a black dad, says <laughs> a black dad. I don't know what kind of daddy y'all had. Mr. Roper White, black dad. Like, I'll burn this house down before I let y'all be late on rent. Um, let's see what else happened. Oh, what else people are saying? Uh, not a lot of guesses. Maybe it's a delay. Maybe they scared. Maybe they know the delay. answer already. I don't know. They might. Uh, black says Mary. Let it burn white says Ramsey D. All right, got to move on. Not a lot of guesses. Uh, the correct answer is white. Care, you missed it. <laughs> Some of you did get it, though. Yeah, Ronald Frisbee the third. Feel like his nose got hit by a Frisbee. Why, what made you go white on that one? I mean, black on that one. That sounds some black shit to do. Okay, all right. Even e even even though frisbee, I was like frisbee. That sound white, but I was like, all right. A Florida man calls American airline passengers blue-eyed white devils. Not blue-eyed white devils. The white devil. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, his name is Shall Shall S H S H A I L Shall Patel is his name. Um, so all oh, right. Um, and I was thought I was gonna play an article, but it didn't. Uh, but his name is Shall Patel. He's twenty nine. Faces two counts of battery and one count of disorderly intoxication. Uh, he was drunk when he boarded a flight from Tampa to Philadelphia. Building your online business? Uh, <laughs> no, we are not. Uh, actually, we are, technically. Uh, we're building it every day, one play, show at a time. Anyway, he started antagonizing passengers, calling flight attendant names, threatening passengers, and aggressively moving throughout the aircraft. Uh, he was acting hostile after he boarded and began acting erratically, yelling and cursing at the passengers. He called passengers blue-eyed white devils. And he threatened to take this plane down with all you motherfuckers on it. Oh, no! He's also accused of slapping the passenger on the hand and face and spitting on him. Oh! <gasps> Video footage of the incident showed Patel yelling an anti-Semitic slur at a flight attendant before he was put in a headlock by a fellow passenger removed from the aircraft. I'm trying to get to my home country, and you made, people made it harder for me to get to my home country, he said on the video. A flight, I mean, they would love to get you there, I'm sure. And never see you again. 
Flight attendant used the aircraft's public address system to ask if any off-duty police officers on board. Who could help restrain Patel? Police said six off-duty law enforcement officers stepped in and took him off the plane. Yeah. Six. <laughs> you you picked the wrong plane to act a fool. What was it? They, was it the off-duty police officer con <laughs> happening in Philadelphia? It was, and it was all on their way back home. Off-duty con. <laughs> oh, you fucked with the wrong plane. <laughs> yes, you did. Honestly, raise your hand if you're not an off-duty police officer. <laughs> right? Okay, nobody. Uh, prior to the departure of American Airlines flight, that, oh, they just a statement about what happened. The flight had a 30-minute delay because of the incident. He was arrested on two counts of battery. One count of disorderly intoxication. He is being held on twenty one fifty bond, twenty one dollars and fifty, twenty one thousand, wait, twenty one hundred fifty dollars bond. Chow Patel, guess his race? Indian. Karen's going with Indian. Let's check chat room, see what they believe. Southeast Asian. This man, this this man, drunk master. Ramadan Rumbler, Pakistani, Desi Pakistani, Southeast Asian. Had the cabin smelling like curry, Indian. Mm, delicious. Apple was Indian. Indian Des, Desi Angry Curry. He remembers what whiteness did to his ancestors to Indian. Brown 5% of South Asian. The correct answer. Y'all, I think everyone got it. I'm not gonna lie, with just the headline, if I didn't know his name, I would have went black. When he said blue eyed white devils, I would have been like, Yeah, that's a brother wearing bangles and uh looking like he was an X Clan. <laughs> yes. I know his his dress all <laughs> got some gold clippings on it. I'm like, oh, they arrested Dr. Umar. What's happening here? Like, listen, you blue eyed white devils. I'm like, okay, yeah, I know I I know this kind of brother, but uh, that's not what happened, y'all. Um, all right, let's go to the bonus round. Karen is one and one. Mm -hmm. What time is it? It's time to guess the race. 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 Stop me if you've heard this one before, but a Missouri teacher who resigned after school found her only page fan, uh, only fans page gets fired from her new job. Brianna Cabbage's boss learned within one work week that she had an OnlyFans account and claimed the new community support specialist at Compass Health violated social media, the social media policy. I lasted five days before they put me on leave and subsequently fired me just this month. They admitted that they didn't call my references or Google me before they hired me. Cobbage told the state, are people just in the interviews like, God damn, we got to hire her. She fine as hell. Probably. We'll Google her later. <laughs> we'll research later. I don't need to check no references, baby. Okay. And then human resource do their job. They go, y'all got to fire her. Right. Yeah. Uh, who hired the OnlyFans model? It's like she my photo fan. Yes, yes, she does. I uh, hope so. Now, what is the OnlyFans before I go in there and really <laughs> talk to her? I, I, I'm not giving it to you. You're fired, but uh also uh how do I set up my account before you leave? <laughs> Cobbage told the station that Compass Health did not explain how she violated the policies. The company did not immediately respond to a Fox News digital request for comment. She was an English teacher at St. Clair High School about an hour outside of St. Louis and was placed on leave before ultimately resigning once administrators discovered her race and side hustle. She made $42,000 working as a teacher and says she only used OnlyFans to make extra money that will help her pay out student loans from her advanced degrees. In October, she told Fox News Digital she had made close to a million dollars selling porn. Not that makeup, yeah. Nah, man, I'm on to something with this shit. I'm right. Yeah. This is so publicity. They, blow up. Mm -hmm. Free they publicity. know what they're doing. It does that lo that logic makes no sense. Well, I got I need my forty two thousand dollar teaching career. I'm, but you make a million dollars. You actually but, don't need this teaching I job. Need, I only use OnlyFans for extra money. Oh, okay. So like, what you make like another eighteen hundred or so? Uh, a million. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What are we talking about? Them student loans is good. What are we talking about? This is like if I when I used to work at the Wise a gym um, monitor, it was like minimum wage. It was a free membership every month, and it was like 
on a on a on a busy work uh, busy week I could work eight to ten hours. You know, fifteen I think was the most hours I ever worked, but. I mostly just wanted to play basketball and it was just an easy way to get to play basketball. And all you had to do is run the list and make sure, you know, that whatever's happening in the gym is taken care of. Right. Imagine if I'm like, yeah, they fired me when they found out about my podcast. I was just doing the podcast for extra money. No, nigga, you made minimum wage. <laughs> You weren't living off that. Right. You Cut the bullshit. You were not living off of that 42000 ma'am. Cut the bullshit. It's just you. That's a quarter. If it's a quarter of what you're making. At this point, OnlyFans models have just seen the fucking article after article and how it works mm-hmm. and it promotes their pages. Yeah. Some of these women I follow on Instagram and they'll post the screenshot of the article. Like woman, well, OnlyFans model was fired from this. And it's like, that's me. Fire from the library. Y'all want to see me squirt on some books? <laughs> like, that's what it is. And then they act like, it's like these articles are always treated like, oh my goodness, I can't believe they let her go. You know, how, if I found her OnlyFans page, and I'm not saying this on no pervert shit, I just, if I was working at one of these companies, I'd be like, we're not going to ever say shit. Uh, nope. They're like, but we got videos of her that, are, yeah, don't look at them, don't say nothing. We need teachers. Uh, she just going to have to work. You know what? Eventually, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be somebody going to cry and they're going to be like, you know what? We need bodies. Fuck it. No she, one cares. Honestly, at this point, she could be fucking and filming it in the break room. And I would walk in and walk back out and be like, somebody got T6 spirit. <laughs> it ain't, it ain't going to be me. I don't know what to tell y'all. We all watch Abbott Elementary. It's hard out here. Um, She'd be like, uh, are you sure you don't want to? Oops, I left my phone on and uh, it's, it's, it's my OnlyFans page. Yeah, I don't care. Um, so we need you here Monday. You're filling in for Miss Samuel. She going to be sick. Yeah, but like, isn't it wrong? I work with children and like, uh, you can see my titties and shit. I don't, I don't really give a fuck. I think. Will you be able to cover or not? I think Jim ain't going to teach yourself. So, yeah, we'll see you at 6 a.m. <laughs> right and early. Six, again? Like it's 6 a.m.? Yeah, 6 a.m. Yeah, that's what time we get here. Yep. You're going to be have to be here. I wasn't really planning on being here that long. Yeah, I know. Well, that's too bad. We're a real liberal school. We accept everything. <laughs> we do not care. We don't give a fuck. I was blowing two guys on my... I don't. That's fine. Good for you. Okay? We love enthusiasm. Now blow the dust off these books. <laughs> and get to teaching. And gut your ass back in that classroom. Nice try. Aren't you worried I'll fuck some kids? Not really, no. That will fuck up your OnlyFans money. Yes, it you would. Can't put that on, you can't put that on there. Mm-mm. Now just go in there and teach them. Um, despite making more money, leaving her teaching gig had her struggling to find her purpose. What? Her purpose of, you know, the youth, the children. <laughs> Come on, man. These articles are so I believe the children are future. Mm-hmm. Not having to get up and go to a nine to five has been tough on my mental health. She previously said she worked on OnlyFans and it was completely separate from her professional life at school, and that she did not regret it. This is the expectation that teachers should be the moral leaders of students, and I do not disagree with that. I taught the curriculum, I taught students reading and writing, I didn't guide them on my thoughts or beliefs. I can't control what people think of me. I just know that who I am as a person, I'm not doing anything illegal. I'm a good friend. I'm a good family member. That's all I can think about right now. Anyway, half off for my mm-hmm. OnlyFans. It's also funny how they don't seem to have a link to her OnlyFans on here. Mm, you have to go and find I it feel yourself. like you did all of this work and you didn't even get a, get a link. link. Like I wonder if they say that in the interview. It's like, I'm so disappointed and I'm so hurt. Um... Yes, so it is Big Tit Milf 73. Mm-hmm, big, yes, and Milf is spelled with a Y. Mm-hmm. Can we get that in a link to that in the article? Because I mean, I'm very disappointed. I want to teach kids, but a hyperlink, I believe, works best. And if it's neither here nor there, if you put in education, you get 50% off. So if you can maybe put that code in the if it's in the last paragraph of the article, it's fine. I don't care. <laughs> All right, Karen, guess the race. Oh, white. All right, Karen's going with white on this one. What was the name? 
Her name was Brianna Coppage. Oh, white. All right. Uh, let's check the chat room and see what they believe. Might be a little delay. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, the chat said I can hear JL Covey mocking this, right? <laughs> um, you won't be raining on this parade, JL. <laughs> raining sperm on her parade <laughs> and then feeling ashamed about it and making shame, it our business, shame. trying to make it feel like I'm the problem. <laughs> uh, K Can says a pog, <laughs> not a not pog. a pog, fat ass white girl. <laughs> the tick guy P A W G. What I'm talking about. What you like, bro? Yeah. I like fat ass big time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are my favorite. Yeah. Okay. Yo, what I'm talking about. Okay. White is the chalk on that chalkboard. White school teacher porn. White black is them lace stockings. White as chalk. Miss right and white. White shame. Almost everyone said white, including Karen. You got it right. One person got it wrong somehow. Um, and that's her. Mm-hmm. Looks exactly how you thought. I'm a little upset they didn't use any pictures from her OnlyFans. That's I feel like she didn't get enough out of this article. No, because uh, we've seen other people do it better, and they get like mm-hmm. the whole like. Here's a picture of me and my boyfriend in that Janet Jackson pose with somebody hands on my titties and uh yeah so i'm so ashamed i won't get the just really bummed out i won't get to teach these mm-hmm. kids anymore but anyway uh come to uh, grandmama milf 1963 uh get 50% on off fans. education on the fans um all right let's go to sword ratchetness and wrap this thing up all okay right. uh good job today everyone <laughs> A New York officer fatally shoots man who charged the police with two swords. Well, you thought you Leonardo? <laughs> Not with the two two swords. <laughs> <laughs> a police officer fatally shot a man who charged authorities with two swords in uh, Long Island, New York. Uh, Alan Weber, 54, was pronounced dead at a hospital on Tuesday night shooting in Elwood. Police responded to a 911 call reporting the man acting violently inside of a home. Weber was screaming and breaking items when officers arrived and refused to come outside, police said in a statement. Uh, the Suffolk County officers entered and Weber confronted them with the swords while wearing a fencing mask. Um, Weber did not obey commands to drop the swords and an officer shot a stun gun at him, but it had no effect. Uh, it's probably hit him in the shell. Weber then charged and one of the officers fired several shots. Uh, I feel the officers had no other choice but to use what they had to to stop the threat. Neighbors said they called the police earlier in the day when Weber was running around to houses in the neighborhood trying to open doors and take mail. Oh, no! Police responded but did not take him into custody. Um, So I guess they had to come back. Um, And so, yeah, they believe it's a justified shooting according to body cameras. So... I guess we'll see. Uh, All right. That's it for this uh, episode. We'll be back probably Saturday. We'll see. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, until next time. I love you. I love you too. Bye, everybody.